the hills around Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia are covered in brightly colored houses and traditional yurts. A Mongolian yurt is a type of elaborate, semi-permanent tent. The concept has been used for many generations. Assembling and disassembling a yurt takes only a few hours. They may not seem like they would be very sturdy, but yurts can withstand even the worst storms. In some areas of Mongolia, yurts are used as places of worship. It's a perfect space to keep warm during the cold winter months. Bono is Adra Mongolia's chief accountant. She uses her yurt home to host Mongolia's only Pathfinder club and a small congregation. Bono and her husband Boomchen planted this church as global mission pioneers several years ago. They wanted to create a better community for their own kids among the neighborhood children. Bono started a Bible story time which quickly became popular with both the children and the adults because of her enthusiasm, creativity, and wonderful storytelling. They used to attend the main Adventist church in the city. As the neighborhood children became more involved in their lives, Bono and Boomchen took them along. That soon became a problem because the car could only fit so many children. The solution they decided was to start a Sabbath school in their yurt home. The weekly services were well attended with parents often accompanying their children. This led to a growing Pathfinder club and then to church services. They are a model church planting team, connecting with their community in positive ways, meeting people's needs, and then inviting them to accept Jesus as their savior. The people are responding and the church is growing in Mongolia. Since they started church planting in their neighborhood, dozens of community members have accepted Jesus into their hearts and have been baptized. Please pray for the work in this country in the 1040 window. Pray for global mission pioneers like Bono and Boomchin, who connect with their communities in creative ways and share a message of hope. You can support the work of global mission pioneers by donating on the global mission website. Thank you for supporting mission.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath and good morning, virtual and uh, uh tr happy Sabbath, virtual and tribe family. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us today, this Sabbath. All right, thank you all so much for joining us. Sorry for the inconvenience, but your safety is very important. So thank you for your support and understanding. Uh, we're going to be doing this for a few weeks, and hopefully we'll be back in our building. At this time, on behalf of my family, we welcome you. We welcome you with love and, and virtual hugs. Let's give them virtual hugs, everyone. Virtual hugs, <laughs> virtual kisses, all that. And it's safe, and it's safe. No one gets hurt. All right, Izzy, looking like Angela Davis over here, will pray for us. And then we'll have some announcements and highlights. Um, let's pray. Dear friend, thank you for this day. Thank you for this wonderful day. Please help everyone who is sick from COVID. And please help us to have a very good so, a Sabbath. And um, Lord, we love you so much. And please um, uh, send your angels to um, guard us. And we love you, Lord, and amen. 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 Thank you, Izzy, so much. Great. Wonderful, wonderful job. Just a few highlights, ministry highlights. I uh, just want to go ahead and just say thank you to uh, those of you who were able to give um, to the wonderful uh, gifts. We were able to minister alliance, the Northeast, uh, excuse me, Northeast Minister Alliance was able to raise over $2,000, well, excuse me, $21,000, excuse me. $21,000, thank you, Nathaniel, $21,000 uh, for the families who lost their homes. Uh, so, And thank you, Trinity. Thank you, Berean. Thank you, Tribe Family, for donating. We were able to help 30 families, amen, during Christmas time, around Christmas time, who lost their homes. So I'll keep you updated for that. Just want to say thank you. This especially to our children. We had uh, children had help with Sabbath school this morning. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, Sabbath school is good. Why? Because we have the children on fire. Dr. Janice McLean has taken her time to say, hey, I want our children to learn about Jesus. I want them to sing and pray. So just so you see the announcements on the, uh, ahead of you, in front of you, we have Pathfinders coming up. If you want to have your children in Pathfinders or Adventures, please contact Dr. Janice McLean. We have the children's choir. There's rehearsal after this so after this on the same sabbath school link this will rehearsal after this and every sabbath we'll have virtual sabbath school and then when we go back into the building we'll have children sabbath school in person so thank you dr mclean for such a phenomenal job with our children we have a few things that are coming up tomorrow board uh, members well we call it a mission mission meeting for berean we have a lot to discuss we have a lot to discuss berean so you see the time, 10 o'clock tomorrow, join us for our mission meeting. And finally, 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 we have a lot of new, new officers, a lot of new officers who are taking on the mantle to serve the church and the community. We have a leadership uh, training at the end of this month that's provided by our uh, Michiana uh, pastors. So uh, we want to uh, have said all of our leaders, if possible, is virtual. So you don't have to go in person virtual uh, leadership training. It'll be on a Sunday, so you won't have to take time from work, hopefully, uh, to join us so that we can uh, equip ourselves to be better leaders and to serve God and our church and the community well. Those are just our ministry highlights. Thank you all so much. Today, we are focusing on closing out our 10 days of prayer. So today, we're going to have additional prayers. More prayer, more what? More power, more prayer, more power. So we have special prayers uh, scheduled in our program today because we just concluded last night our 10 days of prayer, but we wanted to make prayer be the highlight today. Our speaker for today is not a guest speaker. It's one of our own, one of our own, and that is Pastor Chaplain Wookie Jean, one of our, one of our beloved members from Berean. Unfortunately, he's now in the beautiful island of Florida, keeping the warm sunshine there because he went to his chaplain duties to the Florida hospitals. But he uh, is our speaker for today. So our speaker for today is none, of, is none other than a chaplain, Wookie G. God bless you. And once again, BF, on behalf of my, my family, we love you, welcome, and God bless you all.
If we ever needed the Lord before, the Lord, we sure do need Him now. Oh, sure do need Him now. My Lord, I said we sure do need Him now. Oh, glory if we ever needed the Lord before, the Lord, we sure do need Him now. We need Him every day and every hour. We need Him in the morning, 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 need Him in the night, 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 my Lord, we need Him at the noonday, need Him at the noonday. Need him at the noonday, need him at the noonday when the sun is shining bright. If we ever needed the Lord before, Lord, we sure do need him now. Oh, sure do need him now. My Lord, I said we sure do need him now. Oh, glory if we ever needed the lord before lord we sure do need him now we need him every day and every hour need him when we're bad need him when we're bad need him when we're bad need him when we're sad need him when we're sad need him when we're sad Need him when we're sad, my Lord. We need him when we're happy. 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 And when our hearts are glad, if we ever needed the Lord before, Lord, we sure do need him now. Oh, sure do need him now. My Lord, I said we sure do need him now. Oh, glory. If we ever needed the Lord before, Lord, we sure do need Him now. We need Him every day and every Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? It's me and Noah here, your praise team. And today we're going to lead you out in a song of praise. Our song today is Jesus is Coming Again. Yay! I am excited about Jesus' soon return. I hope you're excited that our God is coming back to take us away from this world of sin, but not just us, all those who love and believe in him. This ought to be an exciting time. I know that things in this world are going crazy, but you know what? We have hope that Christ is coming back. So let's not lose heart. Let's stay excited for Christ and on fire. And let's tell this world that Jesus, our Redeemer and our Savior, is coming again. Amen. So this is hymn 213. And we ask that you sing with us. And here we go. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Oh, he's coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. 
Echo in hilltops, proclaim it ye plains, Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain, Jesus is coming again. Oh, he's coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Heavings of earth tell the vast wandering throng. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and whirlwind, the anthem prolong. Jesus is coming again. Oh, he's coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry, by this we do know. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Oh, he's coming again. Yes, he's coming again. Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen. The throne of grace at this time and we will be praying for our families and we will be praying for um broken broken and single parents great god and our father we just want to give you thanks and praise that we can come together as a church family god you know how our families are struggling we want to come this morning and present before you those broken families those who are having problems relationship problems communication problems problems of one kind or another god we bring them to you because you specialize in healing brokenness lord we also want to present the single families it can either be single mothers or single fathers who are struggling to keep things together. God, we ask that you will be with them and help them to know that you are their sufficiency. God, we know that you can do all things. So as we present these families to you, we pray that you will visit them in a mighty way and give them, give them what they need to cope and help them to know that there is hope in Jesus, that they can trust you they can trust you, knowing that you're a God who always keep your word. So again, we present the broken families, the single families before you. God, we believe right now by faith that you are causing some healing to take place. You're causing some restoration to take place. You are helping single families to be able to make it, oh God. Thank you so much for hearing this prayer on behalf of families. And Elder McLean will now continue. Our gracious and mighty God, which art in heaven, Father Jesus, we want to praise you. We want to glorify you and magnify and exalt your name above all other names. Oh God, thank you that you love us with an everlasting love, with your love and kindness. You are drawing us to you even now. Lord, pray for those who are vibrant, Lord, those who have the energy and willing to go forward and to carry the gospel message wherever they are being called to. Take it. Lord, I pray for those who are experiencing problems in their marriages. Father, I pray you will let the Holy Spirit continue, Lord, to work with us, Lord. Cover us, Lord. Beat back the power of darkness, O oh God. Give us the insight, foresight, and hindsight we need that so we can recognize the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lord, because through you, we have power. Through you, we have the ability to be united and to be able to work towards one goal. So continue to bless 
us, Lord. Bless the, the, the members from Berean. Bless the, the members from Trinity Temple. Bless all those who are on the platform of in cyberspace that are listening to my words right now, that you would indeed let your Holy Spirit take full control of our lives because without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing and be nothing. And so, Lord, we're thankful that you are the solution to all of our problems. Whatever I feel to ask of you, feel not grant unto us, Lord, and cover us with your precious blood, we pray. Because we ask these mercies in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Again, I will be praying for the missing members today. And if you could hear my voice, I don't want to consider you being missing. We just haven't heard from you. So I would like for you to call me. Call me, uh, call Pastor White. And my number has the same phone number for the last, I ain't never had a new phone number. I always had the same phone number, uh, 269-217-1208. So if you feel free, missing, or you just haven't seen us, we haven't talked to you, give me a call. I would love to pray with you at this time. So we're going to pray for our missing members at this time. I want to follow up. First of all, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because, number one, you are our Redeemer. You are our healer. You are our father. You are everything we need to survive. And Lord, we pray on this day, Lord, we don't want to consider them being missing. We just want to consider them just having communicate with us lately. So Lord, we pray for those who have not been in communication with us, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to touch them. Let them know that we love them. Let them know that we need to come together to continue to strive for your second coming. And Lord, we just thank you that you have brought us this far by faith. And Lord, we just pause to say thank you again. Thank you, Lord, for giving us another day. So Lord, we petition you on this day that somehow soon and very soon that we'll be able to come together come together and realize, Lord, that we are all a family. And when families is not together, Lord, we suffer. So those who has been absent for a while, just bring them back to us, Lord. Bring them back. Let us all communicate with one another. And above all things, Lord, just save us in your kingdom, Lord. And this is my prayer on this day. Amen and amen. Happy Sabbath once again. And I wanna thank Elder Davis and also thank the McLeans for those wonderful prayers. Um, as we are concluding our 10 days of prayer, hope that your hearts are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we ask at this time that you would sing with us once again, another way to participate and to usher the Holy Spirit and God into your hearts by singing. Amen. He said, lift his name up in praise. Yes. So our hymn that we're going to be singing now is turn your eyes upon Jesus. That's hymn 290. <clears throat> oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying. 
his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of us will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Good morning and blessed Sabbath uh, tribe family. Uh, thank you, those who went on before me and ministering. Um, may God continue to bless you and keep you. I will be praying for our healing. We collectively have gone through almost two years um, of really trying times. But I encourage you to take the words of that hymn to heart. Um, that God is with us, gracious and good. Your word says, um, salvation belongs to you who sit on, on the throne. God, we believe that you reign and that you are sitting on the throne. God, we ask that you heal us, um, our sin sick so, God, I'm reminded of the children of um, Israel who were in Egypt that cried out to you and you heard them. And so, God, I know that you hear the cries of your children, those who are mourning the loss of their health, those, God, who have lost loved ones and have said, not another one. God, can I catch a break? It just feels like I've been going through. So God, I know that you hear them because you are the God who lives in the valley and you're the God who lives on the mental, so wherever we are, God. We know that you hear our cry, that you also hear our rejoicing because even through this pandemic, God, you have showed um, up for many of us, all of us, in ways that we could never, ever fathom or imagine. God, we ask that as the, the pandemic, um, the noise of um, different beliefs, the, the noise, Lord God, that seeks to distract us, the noise of the enemy that seeks to, to lead us astray, God, I pray that you will cancel the noise and help us to stay focused on you. God, we ask that you touch the hearts of the grieving ones. Lord, those who have lost loved ones, those who are have loved ones in the hospital right now or at home that are not doing so well, whether it be COVID or other illnesses, God. You are the great physician. So we ask that you heal us, God physically, emotionally, spiritually, Lord God. Free our minds, free our bodies, and help us, God, to focus on what we have placed in your word, in the wisdom, Lord God, that you have given us through the ages and through your prophets, Lord God, to focus on our health and what we put in our bodies. All these things in your precious name. Amen. Be blessed. Good afternoon, tribe family. Uh, uh, I'll be praying for our youth and uh, young adults, and we we'll want them to know that uh, they are of value to the church family and to heaven. So as I pray, I ask that you, you also pray with me. Let us pray. Gracious, eternal Father in heaven, Lord, we continue to call upon your name because there is no other name that is worthy to be called. 
Only you are the living God, all powerful and all knowing God. Lord, at this moment, I want to lift up our youth and young adults who are missing, Lord, in the church community. I know, Lord, that they are conflicted, they are confused. So much is going on around them. Lord, too much information from social media and too much influence from friends. But I pray, Father God, that uh, wherever they are, that you send the Holy Spirit to reach out to them, Lord, and remind them how much you love them and how much of value they are to the church family. Some of our young people, Lord, and young adults are living in guilt because of the sins they have committed. I pray, Father God, right now that uh, you forgive them of their sins. And I pray, Lord, that the enemy will find nothing to accuse any one of them because their sins have been forgiven. I cover each and every young adult or youth of the tri family in the blood of Jesus Christ, praying and asking Father God that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Bring them back home, Father God, I pray. And I ask that the Holy Spirit will continue to convict them wherever they are, Father God, so that they know that they belong back to the church family. And Father God, so that wherever they are, they will know that heaven is their home. And I also pray, Father God, asking that uh, you be with us as adults as well, so that, Lord, you give us the patience and the wisdom to be able to deal with our young people when they are faced with tough situations. Help us to embrace them, bring them back home, and let them know that we love them and you love them as well. We thank you again, Lord, for your mercies. We thank you for your love. And I pray that you, your spirit will continue working so that, Lord, soon we'll be able to meet with them either here at church or as we worship virtually or when we come to take us home. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. That's me. All right. Thank you, Elder Kaliati, for your wonderful prayer. Thank you, Elder Spencer, for the prayers uh, for those who've been sick with COVID and to our youth. We miss you. We really do. Our youth and our young adults, um, we need you. I'm just going to say it. We need you. Uh, let us know what we could do to accommodate and to minister to you and your family and uh, how we can Encourage. You may have questions that you need to uh, ask. You know, now is the time. Take advantage of the opportunity while the Word of God is available to ask these questions. I want to take this time now um, and thank, first of all, let me just say a special thank you to our communications team. Um, we have now, um, first of all, let me hats off to Rufus Brown, who basically was the person who established this. Uh, all what we have now, you know, we couldn't have done it without him. So thank you, Rufus. And uh, then Janine stepped in, and now we have Noah and Sean and uh, working with them. So we have a full team now, but we still need some people. We need some people to continue helping them out. All right. So now they have taken over the virtual world. We're back to virtual. So um, they are full responsible and for you know everything that goes on here. So please, those of you working with them. Uh, we'll, would like to work with them, please reach out to Janine or Noah and say, hey, what can I do to help? We really need, they really need your assistance. We need your assistance. We need our tribe family to step up, especially at a time like this. <laughs> it says my name is still Pastor White, Carla and family, but that's fine. We're one, we're one, we're one. So I just want to take the time now to uh, introduce 
Um, well, no one's coming up to speak, but we voted uh, new officers for both churches. Berean did their vote last year, but I just want to make it official um, so that because they voted for two years so that you know who are your officers uh, for the 2020 year for both churches. Uh, so I'm going to take the time to do that. Then I'm going to pray over the officers. I had intended to do this in the building and lay hands and pray over them. But we understand with everything going on. But we know that the spirit is still able to lay hands, despite the fact that we can't do that in a physical sense, but we can do that with the spirit. So our first in Trinity Temple, the new officers or officers continuing in 2022. Elder John Davis has been voted in as uh, head elder. The, the continuation of fellow elders is Elder Kenita Spencer, Elder Edward McLean, Elder Gina Kaliati, Elder Noah Dinga, and Elder Robert Kaliati. Amen. We have voted in a new clerk. An assistant clerk is needed. Our new clerk, head clerk, is Vanessa Times. Thank you, Sister Vanessa. Assistant clerk is needed. So if you're interested, please contact myself or Elder Davis that you would like to help out in this era. We voted in a new treasure, all right? Our new treasure is Rose Marie Dinga. We want to thank Cave Carr for uh, taking over as a clerk for three years. For three years, he was our clerk, and he stepped in in the gap, and he served for uh, three years. So thank you, Cave Carr. But our new clerk for this year, this new term, is Rose Marie Dinga. An assistant is needed. If you have any kind of clerical or financial experience and you would like to help her out, please, please contact me or even contact her, Elder Davis. We have counters, however. We have Margaret Stevenson, Vanessa Times, uh, and the elders will be assisting in rotating uh, and as counters when we go back into the building. We have now, we have an elaborate communications team as I mentioned their name before, but for the Berea, for, excuse me, for the Trinity Temple uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church of the Tribe family, we have the new head uh, manager, the new manager of the Media Technology Communications Department, and that is Noah Dinga, and his assistant or associate is his son, Sean Dinga. However, like I mentioned, we need help. We need at least two more people so that they can function freely you know, they have families, there may be time, they need to take a, spend a Sabbath or a weekend with their family or vacation or things happen. So please do not forsake those who give of their, their time. They're right now at the church building while we are at home, their church building, making sure everything works well. So please, please uh, step up. We have young people who are at home just chilling, uh, you know, um, twisting their thumbs. You know, we need your help. We really do. All right. So parents, wake your young people up out of the bed. Uh, send them over to the church uh, to help us out. Hospitality, uh, Sister C uh, Crystal Watkins is continuing that post. Sabbath School, Gina Kaliati, we've been merging our Sabbath School uh, with, 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 with uh, Berean, but Sister Kaliati, Ella Kaliati has been leading that out. Children's Ministry, uh, that's, we mentioned that before, that's Janice McLean. Personal Ministries, Ed McLean. Women's Ministries, continuing. Kenita Spencer, an assistant. Desiree McDaniels, Men's Ministry, that position is vacant. Youth Ministry, that position is vacant also. So we need your help. Tribe, we need your help. All right. Health and Wholeness, Janice McLean. All right. And she's continuing in that. Head, head Deacon, vacant. And deacons are vacant. Deaconess, Sister Margaret Stevenson and Sister Brenda Moncrief. All right, so that is what we have so far for our Trinity Temple uh, side of the tribe family. Now we go to our Berean side of the family. Head elder, this, this is, I'm honored to announce, Berean has a new head elder, and I please ask that you pray for him and support him and encourage him. And when you see him, um, give, say hello to him. And even in the chat, he's on right now. If you can say congratulations and welcome to, uh, uh, as head of eldership, James Warren, Elder James Warren. He is now the new head elder of Berean. And we, uh, when the day that Berean opens up, we want to lay hands on him safely 
and pray over him as he takes on the mantle uh, that was once held by Elder uh, Benny Cajalus, who did a phenomenal job. Now James Warren. It's going to be like an Elijah, Elisha thing. Amen? Amen. Uh, honorary Elder, Elder Betts. Elder Betts is Liz Betts, who is our honorary member at Berea. Clerk and Media Technology, a uh, person who does multiple roles and does them a phenomenal job. That is uh, Mrs. Janine Brown. I make sure I emphasize on the Mrs. Janine Brown. You know, I love I love to call her Mrs. Brown. Amen. Amen. Treasurer, uh, they will continue in their role, Terry Hunter and Les Miller. They're the dynamic duel there. That's like uh, Batwoman and, and, and Batman, I guess. Batwoman and Batman. Church building manager. This guy is doing a phenomenal job. Jacob Brown. Amen. Jacob Brown, he's the one that puts that smile on Mrs. Brown. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just love family. I'm sorry. I just love family. I love weddings and I love families. Amen. Single families. Uh, I don't care. I just love families. I, I'm not ashamed to say it. God loves family, so I love the beauty of families. All right. Sabbath school is currently vacant on the Berean side, but as I said, right now we merge. That is the beauty of the tribe. That is the vision of the tribe where there's a gap on one side, the other side will fill it. So we, we have merged on, on that. Family Life Ministries, the Warrens, they were the uh, leaders before uh, last year. We'll continue to have under their leadership with Family Life Ministries. Young Adult Ministries, Jacob Brown, um, will continue doing that. Personal Ministries, Elder Liz Betts. Community Outreach is currently vacant. That used to be Benny Cajalus, but is now currently vacant. And the last thing, and then we will pray Trinity Temple has voted to welcome into the Trinity and the tribe family uh, Brother Coco and Salim. Uh, I was trying to get their last names and I'm working on it. Okay, here we go. D. J. Ho. Please pray for me. Please pray for me. It's D. J. E. K. P. O. So, what we're going to do is uh, next Sabbath, next Sabbath, I'm going to have them come on. And I want, we're going to officially welcome them in, but I had to make the first reading on the announcement to announce and welcome them at, to the tribe and the Trinity Temple family specifically. They have been serving since they, they came. They love this church, and we want to welcome them officially. Uh, we're going to do my professional faith next Sabbath uh, due to some document problems in not, not uh, um, on, on the side of Africa. Uh, we weren't able to get their church membership. So we're gonna just gonna do profession of faith as the church voted. And so we're going to welcome them officially as members to the tribe family, specifically to uh, Trinity on next Sabbath. They, they will be here on the screen with me as we welcome them. So please, please pray for them and welcome them with open arms. That is all I have at this time. And please folks, remember we are working together to so this is, folks, let me just say last, again, this, you know, this is your church. You know, what I mean by that is not that your church in, in, in the sense of, oh, being arrogant about it. Take ownership. You know, the, it really is our responsibility. The Holy Spirit is working with us, but it's our responsibility, both Berean and Trinity. It's our responsibility. God has equipped us with gifts and let us not just put those things to the side and and focus on the negative things of life, but focus on the positive, what you could do. Uh, I think Kennedy says it. It's not, don't ask what the country could do for you, but ask what we could do for our church. Amen? 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 So at this time, my prayer, as you see it on the screen, praying for the Holy Spirit. If you don't mind, put it back on there for me. We want the Holy Spirit to come down on all of our leaders, okay? I can ask for a whole bunch of other things, but there is nothing like the power of the Holy Spirit to come down on all of our leaders, to give them creative ideas, to make them spiritual. Amen. We need our leaders to be spiritual people, holy people, to hold up the banner of Jesus Christ and to have the passion and the desire of evangelism. When you look to our both church doors, there are still more chairs than, than people, more pews than people. Amen. We, we are, it's our responsibility. God is not going to do the work for us. He will do the work through us, but not for us. It's our responsibility, not just the pastor. It's our as a team. And then to mobilize, 
you know, you can, churches churches are only dead if they're sitting if they're sitting down. So let's pray at this time for the power of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, above anything else we can imagine or even ask for, there is one person that we need, specifically on our new officers and new leaders, but on the whole entire tribe family, and that is your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we need you first to cleanse us from all of our sinful ways. We are undone people. The words that come out of our mouth are tainted with our sins. Our thoughts are impure because of our sinful lives. So Holy Spirit, we need you to wash us, even our best, as, a, as, your, as your servant Paul said, our best is filthy. Father God, wash us. Holy Spirit, wash us. Make us new. Then, Holy Spirit, we don't want to just be washed and look clean and pretty. We want to be mobilized to help edify the church, to do our part. All of us have talents and gifts and what we can be used to, uh, used to help build this church community. But then, Lord, we don't want to just stay here and just polish each other and make us all look good and edified. You've given us a commission, and that is simply to go and spread the everlasting gospel to the world, to grow the invisible church, to grow the physical church, to let people know about the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, put in us, Holy Spirit, the spirit, the passion for evangelism, the passion for winning souls, the passion, Lord, for to see sinners' lives change, to see the drunk now become a health and temperance leader, to see a prostitute now become the woman ministry leader, to see a drug dealer now become a minister or a pastor, to see someone who, who was broken now become whole, to see a gangbanger become a youth leader, lead young people out of darkness into Jesus Christ. Lord, empower this church we need you, Lord. We, we, we can't do the work. We have a lot of great ideas, but they keep falling flat because we don't have your power. We need your power, Holy Spirit. All of us, both church congregations, the tribe family, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Lake Region Conference, we need your power now and more than ever before. This we ask in Jesus' wonderful and matchless name. Let all of God's people say amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for your time. Happy Sabbath Church. Today the scripture reading will be taken from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 11. Again, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 through 16. Sorry. And it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children, tossed and fro, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. From who the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Asher, for that wonderful reading of the word today. Um, now we will start our hymn of meditation. And our song today is Does Jesus Care? Hymn 181. Does Jesus Care? 
Jesus Scare. We ask that you sing with us. Amen. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply for mirth and song? As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with nameless dread and fear? As the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when I've said goodbye to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart breaks till it nearly breaks. Is it all to him does he see? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Amen. Hello and happy Sabbath. I believe I can be heard now. Um, wait for that. What you know that I um I have preached my sermon twice already. <laughs> uh, while I was um I thought I was on and I wasn't. And, um, the second time, um, I thought I was running. Very interesting, but I'm grateful to be on now and that we all we could spend this time together. Again, I want to. Um, acknowledge and appreciate our pastor for um, just um, just uh, making uh, the choice of me sharing this um, platform and to to preach a word and season um, to, to my church and my community. Uh, and um, we're so grateful, Pastor, that you are back. Um, and um, we know the Lord has um, so much. Um, that he wants to do with you and for you, and I want to also say that I how much I I love the um, the vision and and, um, and mission for this year 22. Um, you belong. It's such a powerful powerful theme to have because um, the pandemic is trying to uh, to communicate to us that um, uh, we don't belong and that. Um, and that a church don't matter. Uh, but um, I'm grateful that the Spirit is speaking to us, reminding us that no, we we do matter, and we matter to we matter together to be in church 
and we uh, we need to be one we need to be uh, unified and we need to be together as the church and um and because we are the body of Christ so um so powerful theme for the year and I'm grateful and I know that the Lord's going to bless uh, um tremendously um wanna also um communicate to to our church families that um my family and I we transitioned to Florida uh, and by God's grace um, safely. Um, we thank you for your prayers and your support. And I know uh, for our uh, Berean family, um, many of you we didn't get the chance to really talk directly with. Um, but even even and even though there have been absence in communication, but uh, we sense your prayers and your love, and we are grateful for it. All right, so um, we're going to dive into the word. The time is advanced, um, uh, and we're going to just focus on what already has been um, the theme, not only for the year, but the, I feel like even today, um, as the prayers were being prayed, uh, the pastor um, in his um, remarks and um, prayer for the new, um, new officers, um, it was pretty much the the sermon that um, you matter and that we we need each other and, and without each other we are not the church and we are not, not the body of Christ. So um, Ephesians is what we're going to look at. Ephesians chapter four. Um, we're looking at verse eleven to um, sixteen. Um, so I'm gonna read the the text. I'm going to say with a prayer, and then we will um, just chat a little bit. Um, all right, so Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. In fact, let's do from 7 to, to 16. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does, that, uh, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gives some to be apostles, some prophets, some uh, evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of this de of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things and to him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth to the body for the edifying of itself and love. Amen. Amen. This is, uh, um, Ephesians is uh, one of those polling um, epistles that is very interesting. Typically, Paul will write to, um, uh, um, he will write uh, an episode to a particular church community when there is some issue that has um, risen and that um, they have sent his, they have, they are looking for his leadership. And he will write um, to, um, to give some insight, to give wisdom, to reprimand and, and, and to teach. But Ephesians is different in that it is not, Paul is not writing per se to correct any 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 issues per se but rather paul is writing for uh, for teaching 
He's writing because he wants to uh, uh, um, uh, to teach the church um, uh, of Ephesus, and he wants them to um, to go in Christ and to go into the knowledge of, of Christ in a way that they have not before. And so, the, so this is for this reason. This book is is really um, is really powerful. It's really unique in that. And um, there's a lot of great, uh, big language and uh, high theology and Christology in the book or uh, in the episode of, of Ephesians. So, so we're gonna look into Ephesians and see some what what are some of the the focus. But just before um, we do that, let's pray with the prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful to you that we could spend some time together. Um, we could um, pray together as as a church. That's what you call us to do, um, to pray, uh, to take on the needs of one another, to lift one another up before you, um, to be one in love, and that's the prayer of Christ for the church. And Lord, as we uh, just meditating a little bit on Ephesians, uh, we just pray, oh Lord, that you would speak to us clearly um, what is what you have uh, desire for us to learn, what will be um, not only informative for us, but also what will be um, just a blessing to our souls. Lord, we pray for our dear church that you would bless this church not only for today but for this year um, to be a vibrant church of God that grows as the ch every church member recognizes their, their function and understands their role and uh, play and to uh, uh, play their role of God in a way in which um, the church could be blessed by them. We thank you again for your grace, your love and mercies. We pray for your spirit even now as we speak. We pray, O oh Lord, that your word will be spoken and your people will hear. We pray all this in Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the um, Ephesians, Paul talks about, about the church and high Christology and, and, and why the church is important. If we, if we have any callous attitude toward church itself or uh, the church building, or or being being together in the in the building together, or be, being able to to worship together. Uh, Paul does not share that 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 mindset at all. In fact, he believes that one of the greatest things that the Lord has blessed humanity with is the church. So look how many times um, uh, Paul talks about the just in Ephesians alone, how he talks about the church. He says the church is. The body of Christ, and we find that in in the very first chapter of Ephesians, one verse 20, uh, 22 and um, twenty three, and um, we also find in Ephesians chapter four, which is what we're focusing on. Ephesians chapter chapter four, verse one and, and through sixteen. Um, Ephesians chapter five, uh, verse twenty nine to thirty. All of this talks about the church is the body of Christ, and then he 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 used another analogy. And the, this time is that the 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 the, uh, um, the people, the members, or the the temple of, of of God, the holy temple. And so we find that in um, in Ephesians chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty-two. So where it talks about the temple, it talks about we are the members, the 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 stones, but then Christ is the cornerstone. And so the focus again is that the members or or not only are we are we important? But we are we are part of the building building blocks that makes the church what it is, or that makes the temple what it is. And then after that, he used another analogy, which is um, the bride of Christ. So the church is the bride of Christ, and so we find that in um, in, in Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty five to twenty seven. So again, the the church. And, 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 um, and Christ belongs together. There's this unity that um, the church needs the Christ uh, and, 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 and Christ needs the church. Um, Christ needs the church or the every member. And lastly, um, the church as the army of God. 
and um, Christ is the is the is the is the captain, which is um, Ephesians chapter six, verses eleven, um, verses ten to twenty. So through these um, verses, when you look through the through the um, to the epistle of, of Ephesians, everywhere you look, there is this connection that Christ did everything that he um, that he could um, for humanity. And, uh, and the mystery of, of, of the gospel is that, that the presence of Christ is on earth, not, not in any, not in any um, uh, other way, but for the church. So the church is where, if you want to find Christ, and you, you ought to be able to find Christ in the church. And if you're not able to find Christ in the church, then something is terribly wrong because the church has failed Christ. So, 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 so the church is essential for the gospel. The church is essential for uh, uh, for Christ to still be relevant in today's world. And so, when you ask yourself the question of there's there's been a pandemic for the past two years, and sometimes people are wondering where is the church, and that is, that is a very powerful question to ask because the, according to, to according to scripture. The church is should be alive and well, regardless of whatever is going on, because the church is the body of Christ. I realize that there's been uh, some complacencies, even sometime in my part, been doing the pandemic when you are uh, ex extremely exhausted with everything that's going on. You, um, as a chaplain, you you're dealing with all of the craziness that's happening in the hospital. And when you come, when you leave the hospital, you are scared for your life. Um, you get home and you, you, you're just trying to uh, your best to maintain what is there. And then sometimes there may be some neglect to, 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 to really connect with, with, the, the, with the body because the focus is self-preservation. But, but the scripture here is, is reminding us that uh, uh, self-preservation only happens when we are within the body. We we are preserved only when we are when we are within the body because once we are out of the body, then we are vulnerable and we are no longer uh, uh, effective. I know so many times the focus is man. If, uh, uh, I can I'm gonna worry about my own spiritual spiritual life. I'm gonna focus on my on myself and I, I need to go my my spirit and that is true and is very important. Because we, we are all individuals and we need to grow spiritually. But how many, how much more uh, um, essential it is to not be away from the body and to grow together with the body. So the, the, the Ephesians chapter 4 reads, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the working of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The, the first part of the text reminds us that the, the, the reason why we have, we have the leadership, the pastors, the, 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 uh, uh, um, the, uh, the pastors, teachers, the prophets, or the, uh, the spirit of prophecy, the um, the apostles, all of these um, mm -hmm. evangelists, the reason why we have all these is because the church need to be ed edified, equipped. The, the, the church need to be trained. But notice that the focus is not that these leadership are the one who, who uh, 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 um, they, they are not the one who does the work. They are not the church per se. They are just part of the church. They are just equal members in the body of Christ. Therefore, there is, the focus is not them. The church is not the you. We are not. We are not just me merely members um, who comes in in church only on Sabbath to sit down and to be entertained or to be uh, uh, um, to be ministered to. But rather, we are all active participants in the in the, in the gospel ministry. We are all, all part of the church. They all, the, the, the leadership is to uh, um, train and to equip the church for the church to grow. But that's all about it. But the, we are all members. 
We are all active members, equal participants in the, in, 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 in the body of Christ. So the body, notice that Jesus did not choose, uh, and Paul used this analogy, and which Jesus also used other parts as well, that he didn't he didn't choose to be anything else. Uh, he did not he did not call other he did not call the church um, to be anything else but the body. Now you ask the question: Why would God use the, the this analogy? The Spirit give this analogy as the body uh, uh, um, for us to understand or to understand the church. It's because the the, the body is a is a whole system. It's one system that has different parts. It has a diversity of parts, but yet it works together seamlessly. The hand in, in First Corinthians chapter twelve talks about that uh, the eye cannot say I'm no, I'm not part of the body, or uh, another part cannot say that I am an inferior part of the body. Therefore, I, I don't matter. But no, we uh, every part in the body matters. Because if one part in the body is not there or is not working efficiently, then the entire body suffers. And so uh, Christ wants to to um, to bring to our understanding that the that as much as uh, divinity is powerful and as much as God is able to do great things on this earth, the reality is that He needs every single member that is in the church to do their part, another for the church, another for Christ to be seen to the world in the best light. So whether it be, whether, whether it be um, you don't feel like you have the, the talents um, or you don't feel like you, you are equipped or you don't feel like you have the anything to, to offer, the reality is your presence in us is, is, is something. And the Lord can take the little that you have and he can multiply it for the for the edification of his church. So here, uh, um, Paul reminds us that the, the leadership is there to equip, to train and, and, and to equip the church. But when, when, once the leadership does that, the focus is not on them, rather it's on every member because every person has a part to play in the body. The body is a, is a system. Is a system and every part matters. You know, I've been thinking about this concept in my mind and I said, man, could it be that in these days, as we all, um, as we all, as we all, as a church kind of sleeping, so to speak, could it be that we have, we have caused Christ to be a, uh, a bodiless head, meaning that the the the, the uh, um the body. When people are looking for Christ in the world, because during the pandemic and whenever there's any uh, tragedy, what people do is look where where where, where is God now or where is, where is Jesus, you know. And when they're asking if our if the church is alive and well, then they'll say, "Well, I can see Christ there. I can see Christ in the church." But if the church is dormant, then there is a head, but no body. Because the manifestation of Christ only happens through the body. And this is what Paul, and this is the essence of what, of what Paul is trying to communicate throughout the book of Ephesians, is that Christ is alive and well when the church is alive and well. When every member understands their role and their functionality, when every member understands that um, my, I, 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 there's a part that I play in the in this body, that I belong to this community, and this community belongs to me, and that it is I, I, I cannot just be solo. I cannot just go on my own way. I cannot just do my own thing. But that the church needs me. Somebody needs my presence. Whether it be that I'm gonna say good morning and happy Sabbath, or I'm just gonna make a phone call here and there, whatever may be, somebody, somebody is gonna benefit from it. And so Jesus is saying that if we don't, if, if every member is not is not there to work cohesively together, then the church becomes anemic. The church becomes uh, handicapped. 
And so when what we end up having is that we have an handicapped Christ in the world. So in this 2022 year, uh, the, the, I, I believe the calling for all of us is that we would be able to we will be able to uh, uh, um to to play the role that that the Spirit has put on us, and so that the church could be vibrant and well, and that the community could be alive and well, and the the communities in which we belong may be able to say, "Oh wow, yes, I know Christ is here in this church because I can see the." The, uh, uh, I can see the Holy Spirit through this community. So verse verse, uh, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, for a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The whole focus is that we will grow to the fullness of Christ. And the fullness of Christ is done when the church is being edified. So uh, when, we, when, we are, when we are studying the word, when the, when, when, uh, when the church is being equipped and every member is taking on their role. Um, verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carrying about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of this is for plot, but speaking the truth and love. Verse 14, uh, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro. The, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it uh, uh, um, as much sense as possible. It's, it's a lot in my head. Uh, uh, um, but the... the um, the um, verse fourteen reminds us that we, the church, the church is unless we grow as a church, and the way the church grows is not is not is not simply by by um, evangelism, evangelism, evangelism for the church to grow, and then sometimes that's what we think about. But the health of the church, the church being equipped. The church recognizing, we all recognizing our role and, and playing the function that God has called for us to do. And doing that, when all of us are, do, are, are doing our, our parts, what happened then is that the church grows into maturity. And then when the church grows into maturity, the church is no longer being able to toss to and for like, like a child. So the, 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 the thing is that you matter so much to the church that the church can now reach maturity without you there. The church cannot not, not reach maturity without you there, and the, the and the church cannot be cannot cannot be uh, um, full from heresy, full from all kind of winds of doctrine, without you there. That means that you matter so much that if if you are not there, the church uh, uh, can can literally fall prey to all type of craziness. And so before I was just like, man, you know, the, the focus was really like the pastors and the, 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 the leadership basically needs to do all these different things. And the focus so much is we, we, we put a lot of focus on what the, 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 um, the church pastors need to do as if basically the entire burden of, the, of, of ministry is on their backs. But no, they're simply members as well. They are simply members as well. And we are all part of the body. And then when we all when we all join together in, in the perf in, in, in perfection, and we all grow. And when we do that, the church is healthy. And when the church is healthy, the church does not fall prey. And the church is no longer a child, but rather the church is a mature. A, a, a mature body. So, uh, 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow in all things and to who is the Christ, who is the head. Verse 16, but whom the, the whole body join and knit together by every joint supply according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth to the body 
for the edifying of itself and love. The church is, is Christ's body and Christ is the head. You matter because you are the church. We are almost like all of us are individual cells in the body of Christ. When we talk about the church, the, the first thing, the first part is that you are the temple. So you are the church individually. And this is what's the, the beautiful, uh, uh, amazing thing about, about, about this analogy is that individually we are the church. And as a community, a local community, we are the church, the body of Christ. And then as a global body, we are the church of Christ. And all of us play our role, makes the church a healthy organism. And without our role, without playing our role, without recognizing that we belong to this community, that we have a part to play in this community, without our parts, what happens is that the church suffers individually. We suffer individually. Spiritually, the church, local body suffers spiritually and the, the great body of Christ suffers as well. So if you, if you ever wonder whether you matter, when it comes to, to our world, we, we know that, okay, they, they you know, uh, uh, um, your vote matters. We, uh, we've been told many in many different ways that how much we matter. Your vote matters. This matters. That matters. Black lives matter. A lot of matters happen. Have you thought about the body of Christ? That you matter there too. Your part is essential to the working, to the proper working of the church, of the body of Christ. So Ephesians reminds us, just like 1 Corinthians chapter 12 reminds us, just like uh, first uh, Colossians reminds us, uh, not first Colossians one, uh, I think verse eight reminds us. Romans reminds us that we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. That we are essential. Christ calls us to be part of His living organism. That the world will understand that He is effective and that he is there and that he is present not not by doing miracles into the world not by changing a pandemic on its head though he could do he could do it but the lord wants the world to know that he is alive and well through the church that he's living organism and the focus is on you and on myself that we all will play our role what is your gift? What is your spiritual gift? What blessings can you provide to the body of Christ? I know you may say, oh, I don't know. I don't think I have any spiritual gifts. No, you don't think you do? The Bible says that you do. Some of us are called to be prophets. Some of us are apostles. Some of us are evangelists. Some of us are teachers. And sometimes we think in, of, of these titles in the in the greatest way possible. But have you thought of the evangelist could simply the person who just tells somebody else, hey, good morning? You know, that's the good news. The, somebody who, who, who just, who just uh, uh, love other people. Have you thought of the teacher being the Sabbath school teacher, being present and involved in Sabbath school? Have you thought of the 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 prophet of the of, 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 of the prophet being can be somebody who just reads uh, steps to Christ uh, um, to a community and just remind people thus says the Lord. This is what Matthew twenty four says, and that's being an uh, that's being an apostle. Uh, that's being a a, a, a a prophet or prophetess. Being a, an apostleship is the is the only leadership role that we know that is uh, is up there. But every 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 other every other uh, spiritual discipline or spiritual gifts or simple or simple gifts that God has given the entire church, the pastor is the is the shepherd of the flock, the 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 the, the, the teacher 
any any of us to be so whatever your gift may be and then and, and they, they are these are not just these are just the five that that the, uh, um paul mentions here in ephesians but whatever your gift may be use that and bless the church because this year we need it not only does it, um uh, the tribe community needs it it, uh, uh, um, needs it. Michigan needs it. Uh, 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 um, the U.S. needs it. The world needs the church to be effective. The, the, the world needs the church to be alive and well. So I'm going to leave you. And I'm gonna, just going to leave you with this. But speaking the truth in love may grow up and all things into him who is the head, which is Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knits together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working, by which every part does its share, every part does its share, every part does its share, causes growth to the body for the edifying of itself and love. Do your part. Do your part. And when you do your part, there will be growth in the body. May God bless you as you pray, as you seek the Lord. And figure out what your part is. And put your hand on that plow and do not let it go. Because that's where your blessing is. And that's where my blessing is. May God keep you and he bless you. Amen.
a broken heart torn apart that's all i had to That's all I had to give But in return he gave me joy That could never be told And in return he gave me love That was more precious than gold So whatever you have to give Just come as you are and present it in Jesus' name. For in return of a torn life, he'll give you life abundantly. And in return of a raging storm, the Lord will come cease. So whatever you have. The Lord has so much more, so what do you have to give? Oh, if you were like me, you didn't have a lot of gold, position no more. Precious, more precious than gold, and in return of a torn life, he'll give you life abundantly. And in the midst of a raging storm, the Lord will calm the seas. So, what, what do you? Pray and listen. God Almighty, may your grace and your love abide with us as your body. And may we join together and um and feed one another through you. May we be the unified body that Christ has prayed for um, in John chapter 17. And Lord, may we be um, present in the world 
as the world looks for you, they may see you and us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this week. Thank you for this new year. All this in Christ's name. Amen. Father, humbly we stand before you, broken, undeserving, unworthy. We pray right now that you send your spirit to transform us and let us be used for your glory. Oh Lord, I need you. 